You may have read media coverage of a report that has come out following um, the local body elections, a, a report or a draft report on the future of local government in New Zealand. And the headlines have screamed at you that this report, prepared by a panel of government or cabinet-appointed... Oh, I hate to use the word experts. Suggests lowering the voting age to 16 and far more involvement in and cooperation with hapu and iwi. Those are Māori uh, social um, things, in case you didn't know. Hapu and iwi in local governments, government and local governance matters. It has caused quite some controversy, this report. And I thought the best way to uh, cut to the chase was get hold of the people who wrote it and have, well, we've got 20 minutes, haven't we? Have a conversation with them about it. So we are joined now by Jim Palmer. He is Chair of the Future for of, of Local Government, Chair of the Future for Local Government Review uh, Panel, um, and he's on the line uh, now. Um, Jim, Jim, welcome to the to the platform. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sean. Uh, thanks, thanks for inviting us. All right. Can I ask you, Jim, firstly, so people know who you are, what is your background and what qualifies you or made you head of this panel? Um, some of those questions you might have to refer to the Minister of Local Government as to... Uh, so that was Nanaya Mahuta who appointed you, Jim? Yes, absolutely. Um, just just uh, for your information, uh, I've had a career um, the last couple of decades uh, in local government, uh, last 17 as Chief Executive of Waimakariri District Council, which is a council just north of Christchurch. Okay. Um, so uh, that's... Uh, they obviously, uh, the minister and others obviously thought that experience was relevant uh, as uh, they brought together a panel. Okay, how many other people on the panel? Uh, uh, the, the panel is a panel of five, including myself. Okay, who are the other members? Uh, so, other members are Penny Hulse. Uh, Penny is uh, from Auckland. She is. Uh, now retired from local government politics, had 27 years, uh, a couple of terms as Deputy Mayor of Auckland mm -hmm. Council. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gail Surgeon, also from Auckland. Gail, Gail's had a, a varied background, um, uh, particularly working in uh, community and uh, social uh, sectors. Uh, most recently, she led... A, an initiative of Auckland Council in South Auckland called the Southern Initiative, which looks at particularly at uh, addressing matters of social and economic inequity within okay, the community. Yep. And uh, the, the next panel member, Antoine Coffin. Antoine uh, is from Tauranga, and Antoine uh, has a very broad background, uh, in particular uh, 25 years as an RMA uh, hearings commissioner and quite experienced in that. And okay, which is a huge that. part, of course, of, of what local government's doing these days, all right? And, yep. and also has a uh, um, strongly associated with uh, his hapu and iwi, uh, led three iwi settlements um, okay. as part of uh, his role. And, and the fourth member is Brendan Boyle. Brendan has uh, had many years in central government, which um, it's an important dimension to our review. Brendan's been chief executive of uh, land information That's department right. and general affairs and um, most recently before he retired, uh, Ministry of Social Development. Okay, when were you guys appointed to, to conduct this review or prepare this we, we, review? Yeah, we've been underway for about 18 months, so it was um, early um, first quarter of 2021 is when we were appointed. And what was your brief? So the terms of reference are really broad. Uh, in, in essence, it was how does local government need to evolve over the next 30 years to ensure that it's fit for future and able to best serve and ensure communities thrive. So that, that enables us to look at virtually... The, the only two things that we can't comment on are the policy merits of Three Waters and RMA reform. However, the rest of it is open. So that's roles, functions, structures, governance, partnerships, including partnerships with uh, with Māori uh, and how Tariki should be given effect to funding and financing, and it also um, uh, thinks thinks about what, what, what systems uh, uh, well-being, you know, the stewardship of the local government and local governance systems. Was part of your brief to ensure 
that the democratic integrity of local government was sustained and maintained? Uh, certainly, certainly a, a key focus of our report is how how do you strengthen local democracy, and that's one of the five themes that has been uh, strong throughout throughout our report and our thinking and considerations. And there are many dimensions to that. Okay, rather than the screaming headlines, then Jim, in your own words, what would you describe as the three most important and fundamental recommendations of the draft report you've released? Uh, thanks, thanks, Sean, and that's a really, really good way to open this conversation. So, strengthening local democracy is at the core of uh, of our report, and uh, we think that there is a there's both untapped potential in communities and in local government, and we need a far stronger citizen-led, citizens-focused, and more engaged. Um, uh, ways of working and involving community in local decision making. So that, that I would say that's a fundamental. Uh, uh, okay. Stronger uh, citizen engagement. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Secondly, uh, we think uh, uh, the the roles, functions, and structures of uh, local government and uh, local democracy can be strengthened. And if we're going to meet the challenges that are coming at us in the twenty first century then we need to rethink the way in which uh, we uh, are framed to be fit for the future and able to respond to those challenges. And thirdly, I would say um, uh, community well-being is at the heart of our work and uh, thinking, thinking about the role council con has and contributes to uh, community well-being, we think it can do more. And part of that is how we build stronger partnerships, stronger partnerships with central government, uh, with community, and also with Hapu Iwi Māori. Okay. What about? And this is the one that grabbed a lot of headlines: lowering the voting age to 16. Under what? What are the, Which of those three uh, broad areas that you've outlined did that fall into? Yeah, that, that's a, that's really around strengthening local democracy, and part of the, part of the issues that have been identified to us as part of our review is that local government, uh, uh, the those who who sit on council, um, uh, and and are involved in council decision making, what we're looking to do is broaden the broaden. Uh, both the representation at council, but also increasing uh, the interest of community and starting to get community more engaged in voting. So you Part want sixteen-year-olds uh, sitting on councils? Is that the is, uh, is that the well, outcome? Uh, about, Potential, potentially, there 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 may be a situation in the future um, where where that that is uh, plausible. Uh, in the first step, um, we see we see merit in enabling sixteen-year-olds to be able to vote Why? Uh, in council elections. Why? Why? Um, yep. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, youth rangatahi uh, are in, uh, use a lot of council services, whether it's pools, libraries, sports grounds, uh, bus systems. So they're heavy users of local government services. They pay a lot of um, rates? Uh, they, pay, they pay some tax and... Uh, uh, no, no, do they pay a lot of rates, Jim? Um, no, they probably the don't pay a lot The 16-year-olds own a lot of property. Um, everybody who votes in local government elections is able to uh, doesn't necessarily be a rate paper. They're a resident in our community, so there are many there are many in our community who don't pay rates but are able to vote in a, in a local body elections. And, and uh, I think that's been a tenant that okay. has been in place. For I would some take it in theory. Rate. Then you would also be into lowering um, the drinking age to sixteen. Allowing, well, at, yeah, sixteen-year-olds can drive. They, they, they you can know, allow them to serve in the armed forces. I presume. Uh, they, they are matters. They are matters beyond the terms of reference of mm. looking at local bodies, and we're specific that it is around voting in local body elections. So, mm. so we haven't uh, taken the step of uh, broadening that debate, which I know. How many sixteen-year-olds came to you saying they wanted to vote in local body elections? Yep. So we um, so uh, we undertook a survey of 
uh, an online survey and while that was open to everyone, uh, certainly we got a lot of response from uh, uh, youth that there were about How 5, many responses did you get to your survey? Yeah, so there were 5,000 who responded to the survey and of that, um, a majority, it was something in the 50s percent, uh, said they would support uh, lowering the voting age to 16. So that one, so that was, okay. so that was, and that they was were one all 16 or younger, were they? No, they, no, um, I don't have the survey information. The, the demographics are available as part of the survey. Um, there were a wide range. It would be fair to say that the majority were, you know, from uh, uh, teens through to. Um, early 30s is the majority of those who, um, although uh, people right through in, uh, um, uh, into their uh, latter years, were also uh, contributed to the survey. So that's a that that was one snapshot. We also had a representation from a group called Make It 16, and uh, they provided some really compelling uh, reasons. Who, who funds Make It 16? Who are they associated with politically? I have I um I have no um understanding of their funding or more their might have been, might have been good to find that out. Um uh, Jim could we're, I also we're, ask we're in, Yeah what was that? Uh, I was going to say we're we're interested to hearing all views. Yeah yeah I review. think it's quite an, uh, important when you hear views Jim to know who might be paying for or or curating those views in a political context. I appreciate that's uh, uh, that's uh, your 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 view. Yeah, yep. I understand that. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, the other thing that has caused controversy is this idea of, and I don't know. The, the report and the coverage I've read is kind of amorphous. The idea that Hapu and Iwi, which are um, social groups in the world of Maoridom, should be more involved or, or have a greater partnership with local government. Um, how would you, or how does the report conceptually envisage that happening? Yeah, um, thanks, thanks for that, because it's a really, really interesting issue. And, and yeah, it has grabbed a bit of headline and encourage uh, people to read our report um, in full <laughs> about that. Well, um, don't tell me it was, just, it was just a publicity exercise. <laughs> no, no, it certainly, it certainly, it certainly is not. We, we you know, um, and, and, and as a panel, um, through, through our review, we've talked with, obviously, local government a lot. We've also talked with Hapu Iwi across the country. Uh, we spoke with representatives from 55 Iwi and more than 20 Hapu across the country. So uh, we got a good understanding of views. Um, from a local government perspective, they, they, they definitely want a strong and have been working on building a stronger relationship with Hapu and Iwi. They see it as a, really an important part of them being able to ensure that the interests, concerns and rights that uh, Hapu and Iwi have are taken account in local decision making. So all local government is strongly seeking a, a stronger relationship, participation and involvement of Māori in, in their decision making. So that, that, that was strong and when we talk with Hapu and Iwi, likewise uh, they saw, particularly because Hapu and Iwi focus at place, you know, where they live, mana whenua, the people of the land, where, where they are, uh, they take a deep and strong interest in matters in the, in the local community as well, particularly around matters related to the environment, but other matters also, and they too want the opportunity to be able to contribute uh, more effectively and partner more effectively on issues that are particularly of concern to them. Okay, um, and how would you achieve that? What, what, what's the report's recommendation on how to achieve that? Yeah, uh, so there are a number of strands to uh, our recommendations in respect of that, and it's uh, there are probably there are probably six ways that we've identified that there needs to be um, a, a way of achieving that. Firstly, uh, the legislative framework that sits within the Local Government Act was drafted uh, 20 years ago, and it's and I think it's fair to say that. Uh, uh, since that time, uh, the impact of the treaty and the way in which relationships have evolved is, has been significant in the last two decades. But the legislation hasn't been amended, so it needs to it needs to more clearly represent what the relationship between local government and Maori should be. 
and how that should be given effect to. So that's the first thing. The, the legislation needs a bit of a, a dust up. Secondly, uh, uh, we think there is a more strategic role for Māori to play in local governance, and that's about uh, uh, having input early in conversations that impact community and ensuring those views are taken into account as, uh, as decision-making occurs. Thirdly, um, that uh, we need to be considering um, what are the ways and of partnering and I know co-governance is a word that triggers many people but how, how do we partner? And then there are many really Oh, hang on, hang on. Let, let, don't, don't, don't just say, oh, co-governance. I'm not going to sail past it because I'm sure you're going to come back to it. Yeah, so I just yeah. want to say uh, that in, in uh, communities... Uh, uh, and councils, there are many really, really good examples of of relationships that are working, and they, they would be described locally as co governance, where you may have a trust with three from uh, yeah. iwi, three so, from. It sounds like if it's working well country. in these councils, there's no need to change or recommend any change, then, huh? Um, it's working well in places, but you wouldn't say that for the whole system, and that that's probably one of the key findings is that uh, it's highly variable. Yeah, that's, I guess, that because be. local communities make their own decisions about what they're comfortable with. Absolutely. And, that, and, and it also reflects that different parts of the community are on different journeys in terms of the relationship they have with local Māori. And so some, are, some have really well-developed relationships yeah. and others uh, yeah. don't yet. And, and this and is all fundamentally based on the idea that the treaty guarantees some sort of co-governance or partnership. And I, I, I have to say, Jim, for many New Zealanders, that is a concept they are uncomfortable with in the context of a functional Western democracy. And 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 and, look, and uh, I'd agree, Sean. There, there is there is quite a lot of debate ab about how the, what what role does uh, Tauriti play in New Zealand and and its uh, and its future. And I that is one of the core questions that is at the heart of New Zealand. And, and uh, as a as a panel, you know, our hope is that uh, the treaty is understood and valued mm. as unique. To New Zealand, it, it is a it is a framework, and we've looked at frameworks across the world. It's the only framework that we can see across the world where there is an an, an agreement uh, between uh, those those who are indigenous to a country and those who have colonised it. No, no, no. Uh, there's no no no. I want to correct you, Jim. There's no agreement between those individuals who've colonised it. There was an agreement between the Crown. The yep. authority structure at the time, yes, and a collection of people who were the authority structure of the indigenous people. I, yep. as an individual, yep. am not a signatory to the treaty. Uh, no, you're not. Um, right. and neither am I. Okay, um, uh, that's right. Uh, but we, we, but we, we um, I think uh, our parliament has recognised that um, uh, the, the treaty has a set of rights and obligations yep. contained within it that we, as a, as a nation, should be giving effect to. Yeah, and, so, and our parliament and we, could undecide that equally, couldn't it? Because uh, it didn't decide uh, it, that until the 1940s. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've been on a... Uh, there, there has been quite a bit of change, particularly in the last yeah. three or four decades. Yeah, the and there may be change going forward. I guess yeah, this and comes... Quite, but and, what, and, and, and it's a really healthy debate, mm, you know? Yeah. It, it is an important debate. So I'm, I'm, pleased, I'm pleased that it's being held. All right. Look, a lot of people are going to say, and I'm sorry, we, as much as I would like to say I could speak for, with you for an hour on this, and I think it would be enlightening. Um, what happens with this report or, or this draft report now? So uh, the draft report is, firstly, the, 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 a really key point, Sean, is our draft report, we've written it in a way that it's not just the draft of the final report. We've asked lots of questions in it and, and the things that we've been talking about this morning, we've asked questions along with some draft recommendations and we're really interested in feedback from people about about our report and their thoughts on it. We're, it's open for submission for the next four months, so through to the end of February um, and uh, there's a submission platform that people can go on to and it's pretty easy to navigate and, and 
could uh, give us your thoughts on the whole report or the bit that's of interest to you. So we would love to hear from people. Um, and then we've got, uh, following that, uh, we have to have the final report both to the Minister and Local Government New Zealand. Um, an important point that I didn't say at the start is while the Minister commissioned the review, it was actually at the request of Local Government. Local okay. Government actually wanted this review undertaken. It wasn't a Minister deciding it, so uh, she, she agreed to undertake it uh, on behalf of the sector. So uh, we have to have a final report to Local Government New Zealand and the Minister by the middle of June. All right, uh, June, oh gosh, next year. So this may not see any change, any legislative change till after the next election. I think I think it's realistic to assume that the recommendations of this report, while they might be big, being considered, uh, no decisions are likely to be made until 2024 when the new government is in place and had a chance to look at the recommendations. All right. Jim, I, I want to thank you again for taking the time uh, to walk me and our listeners through a report I think is going to cause some contention. Um, I thank you for um, engaging in, in such a, a positive way. You probably get the, appear, uh, the, the, the feeling that I as an individual may not agree with some of your recommendations, but we do need to have a conversation uh, about these things because they are issues that are on the table. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, look, thanks, Sean. And look, happy. And I know that some of this stuff is contentious and is going to generate vigorous debate, and we welcome that. And if uh, if you uh, uh, would like another conversation uh, along the journey, then happy to do so. Thank you very much indeed, Jim. Uh, have a great day. That is Jim Palmer. He is the chair of the Future for Local Government Review Panel. And gosh, that is a mouthful. And a lot of people are pretty concerned about some of the recommendations or the discussions raised by that review, and the idea of lowering, lowering the voting age to 16. Well, I don't know that you improve local democracy by saying, let's, you know, it's like saying, Dad's spent the dinner, let's get the dog to cook. Um, and also um, the idea of, and there can be no way you dress that up and you don't listen to Jim Palmer and, and know the idea is that there is an ethnic preference for engagement with local government through Hapu and Iwi. And I guess as an individual, uh, as someone who believes in democracy, I think that's a slippery slope. I think one person, one vote, equal access to the corridors and the levers of power. Um, I don't know why, for example, maybe this report didn't say, how can we engage better with Rotary Clubs or Lions Clubs or, I don't know, the Boys Brigade? Um, well, it's because of the principles of the treaty. It's because of, I guess, this idea that we have a co-governed country or a bipartisan citizen, uh, you know, a bipartisan form of government. I just quite like the old democracy. Everyone has the same rights and obligations, no matter the colour of your skin, where you come from, or, any, or maybe even your sexual preference.